there's a lot of medical offices in the U.S. that just sit empty for certain days of the week. And so there's a lot of waste in terms of the real estate resources. Welcome to Startup Health TV, where we celebrate the entrepreneurs and the innovators who are transforming health. I'm Logan Plaster, here with Ronek Vias, CEO and co-founder of MedcoShare. Good to see you. Hey, thanks for having me. So what you're doing is really unique. I don't see a lot of folks here at Health or in the space who are doing some version of medical co-working, this idea of helping independent physician practices, independent healthcare practices flourish. So really describe what you're working on. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I come from a commercial real estate background and that's where I saw the problems that medical tenants have, especially if it's a smaller private practice. Um, oftentimes they need to lease more space than they actually need you know, for, uh, for time periods that they really don't know if they want to be in that space for that long. So with co-working spaces, you completely eliminate that problem uh, completely. So they can join a medco share space and practice month to month. Uh, they can practice part-time or full-time. They can be in multiple locations. Um, it's very easy to get started and it's very flexible. Yeah, we, I, we typically don't associate uh our primary care doctor or a you know, physician's office with like a temporary space. So describe what kind of medical practice would work in a temporary co-working space. Yeah, so we don't consider it like temporary space. Like for some practices, it could be their, their home. Um, so for example, like if you want to open a satellite location and you don't want to invest so much in a brand new space. It's lower risk. It's a lower risk. Um, oftentimes it's lower cost because you're only paying for the space and the time that you actually need. Um, there's a lot of medical offices in the U.S. that just sit empty for certain days of the week. And so there's a lot of waste in terms of the real estate resources. Okay, okay. Uh, what would be the ideal type of practice for a medical share space? Yeah, so great question. Um, we, we have 60 plus different practices amongst our locations. Wow. And it is a wide range of disciplines. So everything from cardiology, ENT, uh, primary care, we have chiropractors, we've had physical therapists. So when we first launched uh, MedCursure, we really didn't have an idea of like, okay, what's going to be the typical uh, type of practice that would be most interested? But we've been like pleasantly surprised. It's such a wide array of disciplines, including surgeons, um, all the way to uh, psychologists and psychiatrists for, for behavioral health. Are you able to cultivate a community, a sort of a vibe in your building that's different than just a, a building with a bunch of offices. Yeah, so absolutely. So what we do is we host networking events for the for our members. Uh, and oftentimes that leads to patients being referred back and forth to different providers. Okay. Yeah. Like a loose integrated network. Exactly. Um, so one of the best case studies we have is there was a patient that came in for, you know, one issue and then she, she saw the other docs that were in the space. So one of the days she made an appointment to see three different practices and she just blocked out, you know, half a day to see all three practices. Uh, so she was just going from one room to the other. And that's like, you know, that to see that like is really rewarding because um, not only does it help our docs with the referral network, but it also makes it easy for patients because otherwise, you know, you're traveling from one location to the other to get all your medical needs. Yeah. I think what I love most about Medico Share is what it does for physicians that want to go independent. They have maybe a vision for how they want to provide care. They're not loving the system that they're in. And they're like, I want to put out a shingle. I want to do it myself, my way. So talk to me about the barriers that to entry that existed before and kind of like how this lowers the barrier, takes away some of the risk and makes it possible. Sure. I mean, so the biggest barrier to entry is when you're starting a new practice, you have to get real estate space. I mean, there are some telehealth practices that don't have that issue, but for the most part, you know, you can't take a biopsy over Brazil, right? So you still need that space. So the options are either you buy the real estate, whether it's a medical condo or you're um, a standalone building, um, you pay for the fit out, the deposit, all these other things, uh, or you lease the space. And leasing the space has other problems. So even though you don't have to pay a large down payment, you still have to give a security deposit. Um, some, some landlords may want personal guarantees. You might have to contribute to the fit-out cost. Uh, so you're basically, you know, you're, you're spending a lot of time doing things that you didn't go to medical school for, right? Your you're basically expertise is to seeing patients, and you're do, running around doing all these other things, or you're outsourcing, and 
And that's another, you know, um, a pain, painful point as well when you rely on other people to think you beat that well. I know this is like impossible to quantify perfectly, but are we talking about lowering the cost by 10%, 20%, half? Like how much cheaper is it to do a small independent practice with a co-working space versus like doing some big build out, your own lease? Like how, how much more expensive is that? So there's two ways to measure it. One is, the, you know, the time saved. So instead of waiting six months to a year oh. to get started, you can get started with a uh, is le- in less than a week. So that's that's huge. Um, and then in terms of like the space itself, every practice is different. So it's really hard to quantify. Um, but, you know, I would say if you're a part time practice, you're saving a ton because you can't lease space part time. A landlord is going to say this this space is yours. Take it. So there's a lot of benefits with the part-time space. Um, I think when it becomes like, you know, kind of equal is when you're a much larger practice um, or if you're like a lab or certain other specialty. Yeah, the bigger you are, you might get some savings on a larger space on a five-year lease. Exactly. Yeah, it makes sense. But if you're smaller or, you know, you're thinking about one or two rooms or being part-time, it's a huge cost savings. Uh, How many facilities do you have currently? Four. Four, okay. In, in, In which regions? So we started in Philadelphia, then we opened in South Jersey, and then in uh, King of Prussia, which is a town right outside of Philadelphia. And then our fourth location, which opened this year, is in Pearlin, Texas. Okay. Tell me a little bit about the Texas location. Yeah, so we love that. Um, we love the location. It's 20 minutes from the Texas uh, Medical Center. Okay. And that, that deal came about because there were landlords uh, for that space that said, you know, we want to partner with you. We really like the model. So the Texas location is our first uh, space that we did a landlord partnership model. And the way that works is we don't pay the lease rate that is the, the going market rate. We pay almost a subsidized amount, uh, but then they get to share in the profits. So they're very bullish about, you know, the company, the business, and just being able to make a little bit more than if they were just leasing it out to a, you know, to a tenant. Yeah. Do you see that model replicating elsewhere? I, I absolutely do. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of empty office space in the U.S. right now. Um, and people are looking to ways to repurpose it. You know, so whether you're turning it into medical space or apartment buildings, it's just a huge trend. Um, in landlords, you know, if they're sitting on empty bu- in empty buildings, they want to find unique ways to fill it up. And we're a great solution because we'll take anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 square feet. Um, and then we'll partner with them so they get a percentage of the profits that we make as well. So that's great for them. But also, like, if we have members that outgrow our space, they can just try to find space within the same building. So it really helps everyone involved. Got it. Got it. Um, I understand that you have some tertiary services that you've built up so that you really can make it a turnkey operation. So what are some of those other services? Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, we launched our services division earlier this year. Um, that's marketing. So anything to do with website development, SEO, uh, social media management. We just did a video right now that went viral for one of our members and she got 200,000 hits and it was just, um, it's good to see her practice just grow because a lot of times, you know, doctors don't want to focus on the marketing aspect of it. Right. And then just being on ZocDoc is not enough anymore. Um, just listing your, your place in Google Maps is not, you know, uh, it's not enough anymore. So giving that little bit of marketing power to them has been really great. So even um, even though we just started earlier this year, we already have 15 plus members and, we've, you know, done some great work and we're very bullish on that side of the business. And we actually think the services side is a bigger business than the co-working side. Yeah. Okay. And then I, what about like, like, shared reception like do you have nursing are there other sorts of things that can possibly be shared in the facility um i mean so because it's medical patient privacy is very important so you're not going to have like the shared open spaces that you see in general co-working um but obviously you'll have the doctor's lounge you'll have like the charting stations for admin or for nurses um so there are spaces that can be shared but for the most part we like to make it very uh private so patients you know they don't know where people are really going what rooms they're going into yeah that makes sense that makes sense um what are you most excited about for the next year 
So we're doing a fundraising round, the seed fundraising round. Um, so once that finishes, we're excited to just... Are you public about how much you're raising? Or is that... Yeah, yeah. So we're raising $1.25 million. Okay. Um, we raised about 200 k so far. And the, the use of funds for that is basically going to be expand with more locations, but then also double down on our services side. So before, you know, the focus was more on the real estate. But what we found is that the services, it's just there's a bigger market that's not capped. And a lot of people are, are ignoring smaller practices. Uh, so we figure that's like a great niche market that uh, we, we can service. And so a lot of the funding that we, you know, we want to raise is to grow that division as well. Very nice. Very nice. Well, Ronak, thanks for coming by and giving me an update. It's exciting to see you guys expand into Texas and really give independent practices a new way to grow and flourish and kind of try their own thing. Yeah, Logan, it's always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Keep up the good work.